Hi, my name is Dr. Fred Sylvester from New Hanover Chiropractic, and welcome to this edition of Health Talk. Today I thought um, it was going to be a very interesting uh, topic as we're going to go over fire safety and fire prevention. Brought Nicole and Brian on with us today who are volunteer fire companies for New Hanover. And um, Brian also is a police officer in Douglas County, and so they have unbelievable experience, 10 years and 20 years. and all that type of stuff, and so I'm sure you guys have seen many different things in your experiences over the years, and all the uh, war stories that have to kind of go with it as well. So today we're going to talk about fire prevention and fire safety, and I think that's all kind of ties into with this month and everything how else kind of January kind of flows. So, Nicole, start with you. What is fire prevention? Uh, fire prevention is a kind of broad term, um, uh, like including like fire safety mm -hmm. and. Um, just being, some of it's more about being prepared, but also what to do in case there is a fire. Sure. Um, so a lot of what we teach about is about, um, like, uh, we teach a lot of kids. Sure. So um, we teach about what to do in case there is a fire, how to get out of the house, mm -hmm. um, also about um, kind of like being, being prepared in the fact that, like, how to get out of the house, but also what to do in case you can't get out of the house. Sure. And um, how... So what type of, what, what does like, you know, like your outreach do? I mean, so if you were in an outreach pr uh, program that you had to go to today, what would that look like? Uh, so we, we discuss the basics, especially like with kids about like um, calling 911. Yeah, sure. Knowing their name and their address, mm -hmm. like what, what is the emergency? Um, mm -hmm. Who's going to show up if there is an emergency? Sure and um, teaching about having a meeting place for kids. Mm -hmm. So that's big on like them knowing like if they get out of the house mm -hmm. and making sure that they get out, they stay out mm -hmm. and with, um, with that meeting place knowing that if mom goes out the back door and the kids go out the front door, if they're all at that meeting place, they mm -hmm. know everybody's out safe. So there's no passing ships in the night, huh? So Ex exciting. Exactly. So that like if the mom comes out the back door and has no idea the kids got out the front, mm -hmm. that mom doesn't try and go back in wow. to to try and save them and maybe her get hurt herself. Yeah, so something so simple as a meeting place you wouldn't even think would be part of that whole thing huh? exactly so like and for kids because we teach a lot of um, the elementary schools in the area mm -hmm. and the daycares and that's one of our biggest takeaways is about like having that meeting place mm -hmm. and um, making sure that they stay out mm -hmm. um, nothing is as important as you are to stay out of that building sure. but also teaching them not to play with fire obviously mm -hmm. sure. matches and mm -hmm. candles and and stoves sure. and anything that can harm them as well as their family. Sure. Brian, what's kind of the prevalence of house fires? And, you know, do you have any stats on that type of stuff? And who's um, most vulnerable to die in a house fire and those types of things? The hardest, the hardest part to answer that is that it's an unknown um, pretty much all the time because it, Fire doesn't discriminate. It doesn't choose sure. who it wants to. It mm -hmm. doesn't choose when it wants to. It, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's its own entity of itself. Sure. Um, I mean, obviously, when you're dealing with um, maybe elderly or um, even like a nursing home side of things and stuff sure. like that, where um, mobility or access to and from um, exits and everything like that, that can play into effect. Sure. Um, but again, if you look at the stats throughout the year, um, there's nothing that varies that it's going to be dominantly males or dominantly mm -hmm. females sure. or, or pets or anything like that. It It's really sad in some aspects because, you know, it like I said, it doesn't choose and it doesn't pick or, or um, it doesn't have its own meaning uh, behind it in yeah. some aspects. So when we look at, like I was, when we were, I was, when we were preparing for the show, I found a couple things that I found enlightening to myself is that, you know, I found that, you know, one in 3,000 homes burn per year throughout the United States. You know, this is kind of an interesting stat, but I'm not sure if that's actually accurate or, but it sounds like that's a lot. Um, sure. Uh, it, I also believe that it's your territory as okay. well. Um, so predominantly, um, like an urban base style, you're going to have more um, than, you know, one in 3,000 homes. Sure. Um, when you're, you're dealing with major... Uh, metropolitan cities of New York mm -hmm. and uh, Baltimore and Philadelphia and stuff like that. I mean, there's, there's so the prevalence 10, varies. 10, 12 house fires potentially a day. 
I got gotcha. you. Okay, uh, where out here um, in a rural situation, we might average, you know, out of 365 days a year, we might average in our new Hanover, we might have three. Okay. So. Yes, I see what you're saying. So so it's hard to give that number then. It is. I mean, that's, and and it's hard to find out like where they took that number from. Like, like what? Where did you do your studies from mm-hmm. uh, based on departments? Um, sure. I mean, we ran 274 calls out of 365 days in 2019. Wow. And out of that, I, we did. That's busy. Yeah. I mean, and being a volunteer, I mean, <clears throat> we're leaving our families and getting up in the middle of the night and sure. dinners and holidays and all sorts of stuff. And, I mean, it's hard to say if they were false alarms or, you know, I, sure. I mean, I, I'd say probably – Luckily, our fire prevention, as strong as it is, mm-hmm. we can honestly say that our fire rate in mm-hmm. New Hanover is, is relatively low. So, Nicole, so what could a family do to have a fire prevention, I'll say, exercise or platform in front of them? You know what I'm saying? So what could a, what could a family do today that would help you do that? So one of the things that, like, our company specifically does is we actually if they reach out to us in new hanover township Mm -hmm. we will go to their home with them (laughs) and discuss an exit drill and look out the layout of their house and Mm -hmm. and look at all the family members and like are they on the second floor are they on the first floor where do they sleep the layout do they each have two exits Mm -hmm. to get out of the home and like we will do that i not every fire company can do that but like Um, but it's nice that we're able to offer that to the people in our community so that they can learn. How long has that program been active for? Um, probably two or three years at least. That's Um, excellent. Which is like more when I got into the fire prevention side Mm -hmm. of things. Um, but it is a big deal like teaching them about, about their meeting place, making Mm -hmm. sure if say there is a, bedroom on the first floor and a mm-hmm. bedroom on the second floor they those two bedrooms will probably take different exits out of the house okay. and then discussing where their meeting place is with mm-hmm. them and because we like to um, teach that if they are in like a neighborhood or something like that it's mm-hmm. best to meet at a neighbor's house gotcha. because something that a neighbor's house has that your mailbox doesn't have is a phone Sure. So when you get outside, especially the young kids, they know that they need to call 911. But mm-hmm. if they if they talk about their meeting place being the mailbox mm-hmm. or somewhere within the vicinity of the house, they may not be able to call for help from there. Sure. So it's delaying response times for us to be mm-hmm. able to help them. Wow. Brian, what do you think the number one killer of people who are in, ho- in house fires, what is it? is it? Is it the fire? Is it the smoke? Is it the heat? Um, do we know? B- believe it or not, it's... <clears throat> Majority of the time, it's going to be your smoke. Um, okay. Your smoke's going to be a superheated gas that is pr- primarily going to put you unconscious prior to um, the fire. Because, okay. again, our natural selection of life is it's hot. Uh, even as a kid, we teach them it's hot, don't touch it. So, sure. again, when it's hot, we don't want to get near it. But um, the problem is is that um, the smoke is... It, it suffocates you, it chokes you out, um, mm-hmm. and basically ends up dropping you down till the point that you're unconscious. And then from there, I mean, you're laying on the floor. On mm-hmm. if we're not there, I mean, majority of the time, within three, two to three minutes, I mean, you you might succumb to that. So. so the question is, is like you know, so when they everybody tells you to kind of crawl underneath the smoke light, mm-hmm. is that the reason for it? Because of the heat and the smoke that you're. So smoke, uh, smoke will always find uh, the path of least resistance. So it's gonna, it, that's the natural thing with it, and it's always it's gonna rise. Uh, so okay. obviously, predominantly, if it's going to be smoky up top, you're gonna have more likely of a chance of crawling on your belly all the way out of having better air mm-hmm. down as low as you can possibly get. So if you are, if you do find yourself trapped in that situation, um, and you can escape or crawl out safely, mm-hmm. obviously being down because it's no different than us. Once you're down lower uh, and you drop below that three-foot radius, you're going to actually see a little bit better. <laughs> you're going to feel things a little bit better. Uh, you're going to have more oxygen down there because the, the heavier, thick smoke is going to rise up above. Now, there's different stages of fire once it reaches that. Right. Uh, it's not really going to matter. Um, you know, it's like... Uh, 
a pre rollover to a, a flash over situation, um, pre flash versus pre rollover and all that. Um, that's where the actual superheated gases are igniting above your head. Oh, so, um, so is that flash over then? Is that what no, that flash over is a uh, simultaneous ignition of all the gases and um, and, contents. and contents inside the room. So everything's consumed then? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Um, there's actually really good videos online. If you would ever want to see it, you can mm -hmm. go on YouTube um, and you could actually just uh, search in there of a flashover simulation. Um, and they actually put like a generic household room together and mm -hmm. they light a small fire, they set a timer, and you'll actually see the contents of everything just get to the point where it flashes over and it ignites everything. It's really interesting because I think when I was preparing for this, you know, they were going through the, I think the four or five stages and that type of stuff, and I think they were saying flashover can occur between four to six minutes, I think, is, is that correct? Depending on the amount of oxygen in the room, depending yeah. on uh, the fuel of the fire as well. That's so, not a lot of time. No, um, I mean, our average response time for the first truck yeah, getting, on, you, getting on the street is within three to four minutes. Okay. We're out the door. So you, f you factor in, um, you know, a living room content fire of a sofa, you know, four to five minutes, that room's going to be well off and right. spreading into something else. But again, for I can speak for our department because our chief takes the time and does that, those stats and lets us know that within three to four minutes, our first truck is on the road and primarily we're on location within give or take five to seven minutes. So what would you think that, you know, and again, this is kind of like off the, the tangent, but when you look at your individual, both of you can answer this. I mean, if, if flashover, or say you have two minutes to get out of your house, and these are just some things I kind of was looking at before you would have to, you know, be worried about death and that type of stuff. Five minutes kind of flashover. What is the territory that you're covering? And I mean, so if the call is coming in and you have this at the other end of your territory, you're probably not there till 15 or 20 minutes there, or is that, would that be accurate or no? Uh, 15 to 20 minutes would probably be a stretch. Okay. Um, uh, ideally, the best way to explain it is um, when, when one of us goes, we all basically go. So sure. kind of putting that into perspective of like, if it's in the northern part of our township, yeah. it's not just our company, it's gonna be the three, four local companies you. around so us. So there is a chance that even though you live in New Hanover Township, but you might, border, say, the Upper Frederick side, Upper Frederick actually might be there because their response to your location from Stop our sure. station might actually only be three minutes okay. out the door. So, that makes sense. again, I, a good blanket that I would say would be within less than 10 minutes, someone's going to be on location at, at your, I mean, and... Again, it also depends on the weather. It depends oh, sure. on the time of the night. It depends on the travel. Traffic. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. it depends on so many of those other factors, but that's why we do what we do when we pre-plan and we set up our run cards and what departments are coming from what direction. So basically, you got to almost look at it as we almost surround it in like 360 degree direction of personnel responding Makes and sense. all. That's perfect. Yeah. That's great. I, I didn't even know that. Nicole, what are some of the, what are some of the causes of, of house fires? Um, so again, it's, it's kind of broad. It's mm -hmm. everything from culinary mishaps to electrical fires. Um, uh, we had a, a call a couple years ago where um, a fire was started from somebody having a space heater plugged into a um, outlet strip, like a surge protector, mm -hmm. which isn't common knowledge that it can easily overheat. Sure. And that in yeah. the winter time, that is a um, big cause of fires. Okay. Um, but along with that, it is um, candles being left on when people mm -hmm. aren't at home, dryer fires. If people don't clean, clean out like the lint mm -hmm. in the line that goes outside, that can sure. build up to a point where it heats and fire. Yeah. It's exactly because as you were talking about earlier, as well as Brian, um, fire needs three things. It needs oxygen. Okay. It needs fuel, like the material, like mm -hmm. the lint, yep. and it needs heat. So you, there cannot, there doesn't have to be a flame <laughs> for something to catch fire, because as long as there's oh, oxygen, that's a big misconception. Though. Exactly, as long as there's oxygen in the air, and something to burn, something can heat up so much that it will just um, ignite, and oh. that's what happens with dryer fires. So, um, but there's also thing there's um, there's a lot of garage fires mm -hmm. when cars. For whatever reason, sure. um, if something wasn't handled well, chemicals mm -hmm. mixed, um, there is a very wide range of uh, why 
fire start in homes. Sure. Yeah. Barbecues. Yeah. Um, oh, the jump absolutely. it in like um, um, charcoals, barbecue, uh, propane, grease. stuff like that. Grease. Um, yeah. Grease fires are very common. Um, she started to touch on things, um, things that people don't necessarily keep in mind that um, a lot of the chemicals under your kitchen sink, mm -hmm. if they're mixed wrong together, they can create a heat source. Wow. Um, again, something as simple as wiping or using a, uh, a towel to clean something mm -hmm. and then putting it in on a towel that's got engine oil or grease or something like that, if that reacts the wrong way, that can... The chemistry it, of it. Yep, it'll wow. actually ignite. So again, I mean, just from having two, two flammable liquids mixing together, mm -hmm. causing, you know, the chemical chain reaction of, you know, your heat and, um, again, there's no ignition source, but, but between the two of them, it creates one. So, so what are some fire safety tools, you know, um, that we could use? I mean, what's your opinion on how smoke alarms should be put in, fire extinguishers, how, you know, how does, how does that all tie into fire prevention as well? Um, so that's kind of like one of the things that we do talk about also when we go to homes mm -hmm. to assess them. Um, we always talk about having um, a fire extinguisher near the kitchen. And is there, I mean, is there a way that you can explain how to use a fire extinguisher just as we sit oh, here right now? Absolutely. Um, so the way we, that we teach it, and um, this is actually like, to me, I feel is a lot of common knowledge. Um, sure. So we use the acronym PASS, okay. P-A-S-S, -S, which is P for pull, you okay. want to pull the pin. Sure. A is for aim, you mm -hmm. want to aim at the base of the fire. Okay. If you're aiming at like the flame itself, you're not going to do anything. You have to aim it at what is actually on, on fire. fire. Okay, makes sense. Um, the first S is for squeeze. You want to squeeze the handle. Mm -hmm. um, that's how the extinguisher comes out. Exactly. And then um, the last S is for sweep. You want to sweep back and forth yeah. from edge to edge, like whatever is on fire, you want to go back and forth, make sure that you're fully coating it because mm -hmm. if not, it's just going to reignite. How many houses do you think have fire extinguishers? Not many. Okay. And that's uh, something I think that is, that's why I wanted to bring that point. <laughs> yep. But um, along with, so along with fire extinguishers near the kitchen, we talk about smoke detectors. Mm -hmm. um, there should be one in every bedroom and every living space in the house. Um, not necessarily one in the kitchen because they can be sensitive, but sure. um, maybe around a wall mm -hmm. from the kitchen, sure. um, which should be, um, they have ones now that the batteries are supposed to last 10 years, okay. but um, we suggest... Um, normally about every six months you do your, your maintenance so test. Um, so yeah. change when the you, season. Yes. Um, rule of thumb is if you change your clocks, check your battery. Gotcha. Um, there's normally a test button on top of them. Um, and even uh, with the 10 year ones where, you know, they're the lithium batteries that are supposed to last, it's mm -hmm. still good to check them. Oh, it's sure. still good to make mm -hmm. sure that they work. Um, and I'm not sure if Nikki was going to touch on it, but uh, if you can afford it, we recommend that you do the dual one, um, and the carbon. dual one is smoke and carbon monoxide, mm -hmm. because uh, just as long as our fire prevention goes for fire safety, that's another major killer that happens mm -hmm. a lot, because um, majority of the time people don't have the detectors in their house, sure. um, and if they do, yeah, you know, they're, they're sat somewhere, or they're plugged in, and, and they're forgot about. So, again, if you're utilizing your smoke detector um, and changing the battery out, most of the time they're dual, or you can get a dual one that'll okay. do both. So Yeah, so to touch on that real quick, um, the CO detectors, like, mo most importantly in the basements of homes, mm -hmm. usually where you have your heating... Um, furnaces and exactly yeah. so um, that's usually what the source is where it comes from so having one in your lower level especially and um, and like he said the dual so mm -hmm. if you have them all over your house it's better than not but CO is odorless it's colorless mm -hmm. it is a silent killer sure you have no idea that it's even there yeah exactly until you you just feel tired and you decide to lay down for a nap gotcha. and it's it can be deadly so two more questions. So one I'll give to you, and then one I'll give to you. The, the, if you do get trapped mm -hmm. in a fire, you, you can't come out at this point, what do you do? So you're in an upstairs bedroom, second, mm -hmm. third floor, whatever it is. What do you do? Okay, so um, 
again, like with talking to the kids, like we, we try to make it as simple as possible. Mm -hmm. um, we tell them if they, if they see smoke, if they s smell smoke, if their smoke detector is going off, mm -hmm. you don't just want to grab for that door handle, first of all, because um, if it's hot, if the fire is right outside that door, you're going to burn yourself. Mm -hmm. We teach about feeling with the back of your hand on the door. If it's warm, don't even touch the door handle. Okay. And then if that is the case and you realize that you are trapped in that room, you want to cover the door as best as you can, put blankets there, try and keep the smoke from coming in. Mm -hmm. um, and a real quick side thought to that is we actually teach about um, keeping your doors closed when you sleep mm -hmm. because it is a huge way of helping prevent the fire from spreading so quickly through the house. Oh, okay. So um, if you look up online, there are so many pictures about like, they say close before you doze. Mm -hmm. um, and it'll show you pictures of like a room that's completely covered in smoke. And then it'll show you another door that's open where that door was closed when okay. the fire started. And wow. that room is like virtually untouched, which is wow. amazing. Yeah, it is. Um, but so if the door is closed, kind of try and block off as much as you can to try and not let the mm -hmm. smoke get in. Sure. And then um, the next thing you want to do is hoping that you had some way of alerting the fire department, mm -hmm. um, calling 911. Then you want to open a window and hang by that window to get any clean air, okay. but also because you're going you're gonna to be in that window to help alert somebody. Mm -hmm. When the first person gets on scene sure. of a suspected house fire, they're going to walk around the house and do a 360. Oh to assess not only where the smoke is coming from, where the fire is, but that gives us the sense of, are, are there bedrooms? Sure. Where are the bedrooms? Okay, I see stuff laying on the ground out here. Somebody's mm -hmm. trying to get my attention. It makes you look up. Okay. If you see a teddy bear or sure. whatever laying on the ground outside of that window, mm -hmm. it's automatic, or even like a screen. Mm -hmm. People will punch out the screen and like it makes you mm -hmm. think, okay, this is not natural, this doesn't sure. belong here. It makes right. you look up. Yep. So that gives us an inkling as to, okay, somebody might be trapped. Sure. And especially if they're not hanging out the window and mm -hmm. that's the case, then you know that somebody might be in imminent danger also. Wow. So, um, but yeah, keep the window open, try and mm -hmm. get as much fresh, fresh air, air as you can sure. until, until help, help can arrive. Right. What's your take home message, Fry? When, when you, because you've been in this uh, for 20 I'm years. I'm gonna add one more part yeah, go to ahead. hers. Um, Keep in mind that, um, and I'll touch base almost on my job side of things, just because I'm a police officer for my job doesn't mean I'm, I stop being a, a, a natural thinker of a firefighter. For sure. So, again, the police department responds to 99% of every call that we go on, no matter what. So, again, um, getting to the window and getting uh, the attention of anything outside uh, predominantly majority of the time your police department will probably be a police officer is probably going to be the first one there they normally do the same thing i know when i get on a location where i work i do the same thing i walk around i try and get as program. much information as i can i'll do a full 360 and then report it back to the dispatch i know majority of the time our police officers in new hanover will do the same thing sure. so that being said, you know, it doesn't have to be that you have to yell at a firefighter, yell, yell to anybody, a neighbor and such like mm -hmm. that. Um, so definitely communicate okay, to sure. the outside that you can't get out. Gotcha. Um, my take home message, yeah. uh, you can never be prepared enough. Um, and that goes for any situation, whether you go out to dinner, whether you're at your house, you're, you're at, you know, uh, a concert, anything like that, know a way out, know your exits. Mm -hmm. um, and just always be aware of your surroundings. They can give the same question final. What's your take home message? Um, it's same thing. Sure. It, it is about being prepared, having, having um, an exit drill planned, not only for home, but your workplace as well. For sure. Um, I know a lot of schools and offices, they practice fire drills and everything else. Mm -hmm. So you know, like, you know that wherever your closest exit is, is the mm -hmm. way you're going to go. But, um, um, yeah, just having being aware. Yes, absolutely being aware of your surroundings mm -hmm, um, because um, it's it's so easy to overlook something sure. that can cause a fire or anything else, and just home maintenance mm -hmm. and be trying to prevent the fire from ever happening sure. um, is going to be your safest bet as to not get injured or hurt. Mm -hmm. um, and this smoke detectors are huge sure. we used to teach about um, checking them monthly mm. but we suggest checking them weekly because wow. um, 
that the second that that smoke detector goes Doesn't off, work. that's your cue to get out of the house because if that's not working, sure. then you're you're taking time away from your exit to get out of the home. Thank you both for coming on, Brian and Nikki. I mean, just some tremendous information. And when you start thinking about how simple things can be to help save lives and prevent, you know, um, devastating, tragic, horrific results, that type of stuff, I mean, this information is just um, exceptional and our community will only benefit from having this. And then I would also encourage our community that if you want to have any of the um, exit plans in the fire prevention, please contact the department because I don't think that's a service many people know about. At least I didn't. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, until you came here today, um, that is something that I think is so noteworthy and, and worthwhile because talk about just taking an active, proactive step in things. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's amazing that you guys offer it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much for coming on to the show. Absolutely. Good day and good health.